Hey guys, we got another wonderful, awesome video for you today. We are going to be installing the small Noctua cooler in this wonderful TG01. As you can see, it has the Intel cooler still in here. I have the side off, the GPU up. You do not need to remove the GPU to do this. And we are going to get this bad mamma jam of a cooler installed in here. And then I'm going to throw you some numbers. And uh, yeah, that'll be the video for today. So let me get everything ready and out of the package and we'll get started. Hey guys, we got everything unpacked and we got it on the table here. A couple quick things I want to explain before we get into this video that I didn't explain in the intro. This is a three or a, a PMW four pin to three uh, fan adapter. One of these guys is going to be a four pin and the rest are three pins. And what I say by what I mean by that is this guy right here has four pins in here and the rest of these have three. This is a sensing cable. When we install this in the computer on the CPU heatsink right here, this four pin has to go to our CPU heatsink. It's very important. Uh, our forward fan is going to use the extra cable on here, and our last cable is not used. So if you really want to, you can get a dual one of these. I will have a link in the description down below for this guy right here. So the install hardware you're going to pull out is this long screwdriver. You're going to pull out this bracket right here. Along with this bracket, it should be on the Intel side, label it as Intel. They go in this way in the PC. If you put them in like that, this it will not work. Um, of course, you are going to need some 16 millimeter screws right here, because the screws that come with it do not work. I will have a link in the description below for a kit. Uh, I bought a 360 for, I think, under $20. You're going to grab the white standoffs out of the, the case. This box right here is where all this stuff's gonna come out of. Uh, FYI, they do sell this heat sink with only one of these kits or vice versa. If you do that, you will not have all the parts you need because you need parts from the Intel and AMD to make this cooler go in successfully. We do have our two 92 millimeter redox fans. And then of course we need our T15 Torx head to remove this cooler. All right, guys, we're going to get started. And the first thing we are going to do is remove our stock 1151 uh, Intel heatsink that is on our AMD Ryzen 3700X. Go ahead and pop the heatsink off. Last but not least, you either want some ice tropical alcohol and a piece of paper towel. You're going to go ahead and wipe the thermal paste off. Be careful, this thermal paste is conductive. Well, not all of them are, but uh, some, some are and some aren't. Just be careful not to get this on the board. So I usually wipe and I fold it on the inside so it stays put. So every time, just kind of be careful not to get it on your fingers. This stuff is uh, not fun to deal with. Gets in everything and doesn't like to come off with soap. So now that we have our CPU heatsink uh, wiped down, we are going to go ahead and put our standoffs in. And then we're going to put our first bracket in. We're going to take our 16 millimeter M.3, M.3, M3 screws, and the kit does come with an Allen if you don't have an iFixit kit or anything like that. But I already have, uh, that is going to be the wrong one. The T15 is not the correct one. It is the T10 for this guy. That will work. And we're going to come in here and drop this bad mamma jamma of a heatsink cooler bracket. Go ahead and get both screws in before you snug them down and uh, then tighten them up until they stop. Not, Don't superman them, but definitely get them uh, snug. So we'll go ahead and get our other bracket prepared. Gosh darn it. This isn't very uh, intuitive to actually doing this. I wouldn't do it on an angle. I'd either lay it flat. i just lay it flat. Of course, we're using the middle hole on this guy. One thing to be careful about is if you do touch the processor with your fingers is to make sure you wipe it off if you got any oils or anything like that on it, like I just did. So go ahead and get these both started and then snug them up. That's the brackets installed. So I'm going to come and grab these three latches right here. One, two, three. Pop our forward uh, door light case front off. Uh, set this off to the side. I already have them installed where they go but these are Chromex anti-vibration mounts. You can use the ones that come with the fans if you buy the upgraded fans. These are the B model, the A model come, come with these. Um, they are the shorter ones, so I would say get these right here. But pretty much how these work, you 
pick some holes on here and you get the, the tab through. Once the tab's through, go ahead and pull and then kind of wiggle because the, the hole is not the same size as a, a regular screw hole. And then these tabs are installed. I will count these for you so you know how many it is. It's one, two, three, four, five. And then from this side, from the top is one, and then it's right below here is two. Uh, from the bottom, it's the first one right here. And then we're gonna put our first fan in. What's nice about Noctua fans is they have a dummy mark for which direction the fan blows. So this is sucking, and it turns that way and it blows that way. Uh, some people are talking about making a hole and attaching the fan right here. I see negative temperatures to versus having the fan up here. So right here, I actually seen a, it was a detriment to sucking in with the uh, two fan GPU. And there you go. Kind of pull them tight. Pull it tight. And it sucks it right in. They're real kind of, they're kind of a cool design. Kind of lets you put a fan where, where uh, fan screws won't go. All right, guys, there we go. We got them all in, kind of pull. You'll feel them snap in. And that's now in there nice and snug and secure. So we're going to go around to the back of this case and we are going to remove these three screws on this black fan. I'm using the Noctua guy just because that's what was handy. If you lose one of these screws, all the fan kits do come with extra screws and it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, last screw, you're going to want to put your hand on the back of the fan and then we are coming out. Fan's going to come straight out and you pull this wire right here and then that is now out. Place that guy off to the side. Then we're going to come here and look at our fan. We're going to look at the direction it blows. There she blows. So the arrow is blowing that way and it's turning that way. So we want this to exhaust. So just be aware that these tabbies are going to face forward. Them tabs are going to face forward. And then you're going to come down here and plug it in. And make sure... Our arrows are still pointing in the correct direction. And then of course we need to put the three screws back in and that's all the fans installed. All right guys, so now we're gonna get the heat sink in. We do gotta apply some thermal paste. And before we do that, we do wanna put the fan splitter in. And we'll hook up our front fan. So again, we'll find our four pin, lay that forward. And the pins on this guy face the bottom, face the floor. That's our heat sink. And these two guys are our three pins. And go ahead and connect that fan. And we are gonna tuck this guy underneath our fan right here so it doesn't affect our airflow, our CPU heat sink wire. And then we're also gonna tuck this guy right here underneath the fan too. You don't want to block any airflow and it's okay for this this wire to lay on the motherboard all right guys so now we got to get some thermal paste installed and that's pretty much to put like half a pea size in the middle little guys and uh, i usually get a very even application that way if you want you can put the full pea size and it'll just smear out but i like to use as much of that surface area as i can with that thermal paste to try to pull that heat off that processor so now we are going to go ahead and install our cute but very efficient noctua mini little cooler so guys this heat sink versus that heat sink we are seeing um, almost a 10 to 13 Celsius difference, and the big heat sink was 10 to 15 Celsius difference. Make sure we got our four pin, and we are gonna hook this bad mamma jamma of a little cooler up. But of course, when you're in here, oh, got it the wrong way. You gotta make sure that uh, we line the screws up. This one's a lot easier to do than the big guy. Come here, and you're gonna go through the fan blades, Unless you want to take the fan off, you can if you if you wish. We're going to get this cooler started. There we go. I make sure both screws are starting to secure down. If they're not, uh, loosen up the other side a little bit. And you should try to do about two or three turns. Switch to the other side, two or three turns. And that'll help the thermal paste smush on it evenly. Otherwise, you might squirt it out one side. 
these screws bottom out and they have springs for tensioners. So go to it stops and you don't have to tighten it up anymore. And there we go. That's that heat sink installed guys. It's a pretty simple thing to do. And with the 3700X that's in here, it really is gonna affect the temperatures with adding this fan and adding this four heat pipe Noctua L965. Just be aware that you get the right kit because they do sell them with Intel only and AMD only. And you wanna make sure you get the right kit. Um, some of them will go for less than the MSRP that I talked about and they will only have one or the other. Uh, so guys, we'll get to the nitty gritty of what this CPU heatsink can do. So on a on time spy 20 loop stress test, we achieved a 72 to 73 Celsius average. Our GPU did a 70 C. Of course, the radiated heat, they radiate on each other. Um, of course, these are the cheaper Noctua's. These are the 13 to 15 dollar bone uh, fans. If you get the tan and brown that look like this, they're more RPMs, a little bit more airflow. They are 17, uh, 16 to 17 bones. So it's only a couple more dollars. I would say get, you know, this style fan if you can. All right, this is this install in a nutshell, guys. Go ahead and pretty much reinstall your GPU and you're off to the races and you're gaming, guys. So if there's any questions, comments, concerns, throw them down in the comment section below. Um, all this stuff will be linked in the description down below as well. The heatsink, the fans. I will have the upgraded fans down there for you too. If I forget, just yell at me. And the splitter and the screw uh, kit as well. So, oh, I didn't tell you what the stock CPU heatsink ran. So we were running 85 to 87 Celsius average. On, I, did, uh, I did actually 40 stress tests to do that. So it was two stress tests of time spy. And that brought the GPU up to 69 between 69 and 72 Celsius uh, with the stock Intel heatsink. Uh, that's a temperature difference of 10 to 15 Celsius overall. So if you really want your stuff to run efficient and game well and not be, you know, an extra space heater for the room, get this heatsink. Well, it's still going to be a space heater for the room no matter what, but, you know, a space heater that catches on fire because it tipped over and, you know, started your carpeting on fire and now you're, you know, not, not able to put the fire out because you don't have a fire extinguisher and you're like, oh, we need to evacuate. Just kidding. Anyways, guys, this was Tech Network Productions video from Tech Network Media, and I hope you guys enjoyed, like, and sub, and have a nice night, y'all.